Mm, it is Wednesday again. Oh, not now. <laughs> not now, guys. Not now. Hello, everyone. I'm back. <laughs> it is a Good morning. Yeah. <laughs> I have to turn my do not disturb on, on my laptop. Like, don't call me right now. <laughs> All right, so Chrissy, already before we were live, she's excited, uh, got excited, uh, signed up for Zoom. She tried calling you and she wanted to know if you got her call yet. Chrissy O'Rourke. I did not. I still did not get it. I'd like to know what kind of thing she's got in that house. I'm not kidding you. Right. That's Do you a ask her if she has a landline, or is it is it only a cell phone she's been trying to call on? Let's see. Because um, then she asked, "Can spirits walk into to a TV?" I swear, I've seen a line of people walking into my mirror and into the TV. And uh, not that I've ever seen. So she might have something a little more right going on. If she has a landline phone number, tell her to give it to you. I'll only sell. Shoot. I don't know what we're going to do then. It, I mean, they can disrupt a regular line too, obviously, but it's e much easier for them to disrupt a cell phone. Would it work if like a friend called from their cell phone, like called you in the car and said, Hey, Mary, and I'm a friend of Christy. I'm starting my call now. And then pulled into the driveway, got out, walked into the house. Yeah, that might actually work. As long as who's ever in the house didn't know that that's what they were doing. In <laughs> other words, you know, don't announce to somebody you're living with, say, well, Shirley's coming over and we're going to try to call Marianne. That won't work. But if you get it all set up outside of the house and mm -hmm. then, you know, even have her start calling me when she pulls in your driveway. Because the ghost should know what she's doing if the ghost doesn't know she's coming. Hmm. Yeah. You don't want to give them a heads up. That's right. Be That's exactly right. <laughs> Got uh, it. Let's see. Let's go back. Oh, Dana's with us. Hello, Dana. And Lee, Jennifer, Karen, uh, Patrick. Um. Let's see, here's a question from Meg. I've heard you say, um, if I dream of someone who has passed, then that person has crossed over. What about if I dream of a live person, but it seems like a visitation? People can dream of people all the time, whether they're alive or dead. And if it's somebody that you'd been thinking about that day, or it, it's like we start thinking about something, buddy, and all of a sudden the phone rings and there they are. How did you know they were going to be calling? You know, it's weird like that. But no, you can have dreams of all kinds of people. Mm -hmm. So, but it's the ones that we're concerned with because of the ghost thing. It's if they're dead, then that's where, you know, then they're in heaven. They're where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. oh, Sandy is joining us. Um, let's see. <clears throat> see, I have my seeds up from Jennifer on all the entryways in my house, is it possible for ghosts to still get in? My two sons have seen and heard some things lately. I left a message last week and she's concerned. Well, first of all, check your seeds. If any of them are cracked or popped, that means somebody was at least trying to get in that way. If the seeds are still solid, nothing out of the ordinary, then nobody was even trying. Are you sure all the seeds are where they're supposed to be? And did we put them on attics? Do you have a well? Did you check your fireplaces? Make sure you check everywhere. Um, I haven't taken messages off for mm, about five or six days now. So you may, you know, I, I haven't taken your message off yet. So, but, uh, and don't forget the seats only stop ones that have crossed over or ones that haven't crossed over, once the crossed over can come and visit. And with the holidays and grandchildren, it could be grandparents, aunts and uncles, and kids are good. Kids can see all kinds. So 
let me see if I can find your phone uh, message and, and I'll give you a call back. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Martha says she, uh, there is a woman a ghost in her small mobile home. She has long cream color dress with a blue color uh, scarf. She doesn't know why she's there. That might be something to join a zoom on. Exactly. Because we'd be able to see what she looks like. And by as asking yes and no answers, we may be able to get that answer for you. But just from on here, I can't tell what she wants. Um, Patrick, um, he had an out of body of experience some years ago. It was amazing, lasted about a minute before snapping back into his body. And he was wondering if you can see people who are out of body. I cannot because people that astral plane or out of body are not dead. So, nope, can't see them at all. <laughs> um, so Karen, I sent an email through the store early, uh, early morning, I wonder if she meant like this morning, have concerns regarding if my sister crossed over seeking peace from recent abrupt death in March. I do not look at anything on a computer. I'm sitting here with my arms crossed six inches away from this computer. I don't see anything. Uh, sometimes the webmaster will get some of these things and fax them over so that I can see them that way. But you got to call. That's the best way for me to, uh, you know, get information to you. I, going on the computer, faces and tweets, and I, I'm on all that stuff. I don't look at it. I have no idea. But well, that, well yeah. <laughs> you're on in that the accounts are created, but you're not the one monitoring them and you're not the one. Correct. You know, um, so you're looking at them, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Um, says Gordon says he is a medium and wonder if you have ever tried cabinet work with physical mediumship. Thanks for your reply. I'm not sure what you mean by cabinet work. Um, what that even is. If that's like putting a spirit into a cabinet. Um, but that's usually yeah. more more um, troublesome than just an earthbound spirit. Um, and usually few and far between. Um, or getting a cabinet to open. Usually physical mediumship that is the table rocking, the horns blowing. Kind of like what Lily Dale was doing with the, the horn that would kind of float around on the table. Oh, yeah, no. I don't, I, no, I, I don't need any props. Right. Well, and, and you're doing something slightly different. Usually that type of mediumship is those that have crossed over. Um, you're not dealing with those kinds of spirits. Them. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. Um, could it be possible that Melissa six year old sees a ghost and that ghost is causing him to act out? I hear my, she hears her son talking to someone, but no one is there. Absolutely. There is a, a, a lady had called me and she said, uh, my little boy is such a good little boy. He's never done anything wrong. He's seven years old. And the last four weeks he has been absolutely horrible. He cut his sister's hair with a pair of scissors. He's taking uh, paper towels or paper napkins, turning on the gas stove and throwing them on the flame on the stove. And he keeps saying, Billy made me do it. Well, when she called, there was a little boy ghost there that was absolutely influencing him to be naughty. And I gave her suggestions, called priest, a minister, smudge, uh, have me come out, whatever you wanna do. And, and I'm not a psychic, I'm not a medium, but I just knew when I hung up with this lady that she really wasn't going to do anything. About two weeks later, she called me and she said, I should have had you come over. Uh, Billy made her son throw a five pound bag of sugar in the dryer and turn the dryer on at three o'clock in the morning. And that dryer couldn't even be saved. So, yes, kids can absolutely be influenced by kid ghosts. Yes, yes, yes. That that was more expensive than just having you come out and take care of the problem, I'm sure. It's way cheaper <laughs> to have me come out than buy a new dryer, you betcha. <laughs> so there's uh, Marianne's phone number for anybody that would like to call Marianne. 
uh, to call and leave a message and uh, for Marianne to call you back. I'll show it multiple times. Um, let's see. So Jules says that uh, you told me a few weeks ago to check for a UTI because my mom was seeing dead relatives. Now she is seeing people that are still alive. I heard this can just be a way to prepare for transition. Yeah, it's, you know, it, it's amazing when you get close to that part of your life, what you start seeing or realizing or start thinking about. So that very well could be what that is. Absolutely. Uh, Lisa is joining us. Uh, so is Cindy. Uh, let's see. Lee, um, I dreamt of my grandmother last night and I was able to hug her. After reading your book, I have wanted her to come visit. It was wonderful. Thank you for the idea to look for loved ones to visit. That's always fun. It works. That's yeah. very nice. Thanks for letting us know, but it absolutely works. All right, guys. So feel free to ask questions, put in comments. Marianne's answering uh, live for you today. Um, we do this every Wednesday at 10 a.m. unless there's some sort of like holiday or something comes up, which we've only ever had a change. I think it was like one. Once we changed it and once the computer wouldn't work. Oh, yeah, <laughs> there was that one. Yeah, there, there <laughs> certainly was. Yes, yes, yes. Right. I will be at the store at the Goddess Elite on Saturday the 19th from 1 to 4. So anybody that is in this area, uh, masks, social distancing. We did it about six weeks ago. It worked out just fine. And um, bring pictures. Let me look at pictures if you have questions. All the stuff will be there if you're looking for Christmas gifts. Between what I'm bringing and what Melissa has in the store, you should be able to do all your Christmas shopping. So <laughs> We got a few things. <laughs> um, so Patrick, um, signed up for audiobooks and he's listening to your Wingo speak and he was wanting to know why if you knew why um when you had the house next to the cemetery and the ghosts would wait in your home until the funerals and why they wouldn't talk to you because there's the follow-up part of his question i do not know why they wouldn't talk to me but they didn't cross over until the final memorial service so it was like my dining room was a way station they were just sitting there waiting and they just like i said they just never would talk to me they didn't do anything they just sat there and believe it or not i know well for people that still get the plain dealer you know they finally started showing pictures of who was dead maybe 10 or 15 years ago but when we moved down to Worcester in the 70s, they already put pictures in their local newspaper. And that's how I figured out who was sitting at my dining room table. But then I would look and I didn't see him and I would check the newspaper there and sure enough, their memorial service or their burial was that day and they were just gone. So I don't know why they didn't talk to me. All right. So Sandy asks when the next Zoom is. So the next Zoom that has room in it is December 21st, which is a Monday night, uh, 730 till nine. We go until everybody has their turn to ask questions. So everybody attending gets to ask, you know, two questions. Marianne can answer if you have earthbound spirits, if you have a portal in your home, or if you have negative energy on you. So, um, and we just added right before we went live, uh, January 8th, which is a Friday. So um, 21st is the last one for this year. And January 8th will be the first one for 21. Right. When everything's supposed to magically get better at the tick of the clock, right? <laughs> well, it's starting to look promising. Let's hope. Let's hope. Yeah, I know. Uh, so Lewis wants to know how good is the law of abundance and manifestation? There's a university that he really wants to attend and feels like he needs a divine intervention <laughs> to get in. Seriously, when you are, think about that when you're writing out your law of abundance check, that that's what you want. It doesn't, again, it's, it's not always winning the lottery or winning a prize or, but I've had people that got, met their true love after writing a law of abundance check. I had a lady that got a kidney for, for a kidney transplant that had a very rare blood disease 
They didn't think she'd ever be able to get one. Three months after her third law of abundance check, she got it. So you know what? It's a matter of thinking about it and why you're writing the check. And believe me, there's so many people that have let us know that it really does work. Let's see. Um, Drew, uh, a few years back, lost his kitty cat. And about a week after she passed, he was at work and heard her meow. Cats, I, I'm sure, can be pretty stubborn about crossing over if they really like their owner. Oh, boy. Are they ever. I, I mean, I can easily get a dog to get into the light if it's an earthbound dog. But a cat, nah, you can't make them do anything they don't want to do. So what I have to hope for is that there's a earthbound human there that can scoop the cat up and take the cat with them when they go. That's if they can catch it. Um, but no, your animals, you know, a lot of people will hear um, the toenails from their dogs on the tile or on the wooden floor, or you're laying, you know, you're sleeping and they used to jump on the bed with you at two o'clock in the morning. You can feel the bed go down. So no, they can absolutely visit with you. Um, and just because you heard her meow doesn't mean that she's earthbound. She could be crossed over too. And animals come in dreams too, so look for. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of, that's a good crossway um, or crossover because Rebecca was asking, um, how can people, how can you ask for loved ones to visit? Okay. Um, think about it this time of the year because of the holidays. Relatives always visit around the holidays. We just had Thanksgiving, Christmas is coming, and this time of the year, they always show up. If it's their birthday, if it's their anniversary of their death, if it's your birthday, um, or a day that all of a sudden you're just vacuuming and all of a sudden you start thinking about Aunt Mary, I bet she's around someplace. So before you fall asleep that night, say, tonight when I dream, I'm going to talk to Aunt Mary. And you have to put it out there. And hopefully you remember your dreams. And if you don't, uh, get Mugwort, M-U-G-W-O-R-T. I have it in the store. Melissa has it in the store. Uh, put it between your pillowcase and your pillows. And then in about three weeks, you will start remembering your dreams. But it, it's, and this is a good time with the holidays to think about uh, these people and let them come in a dream. All right. So Rebecca was wondering if you have to post, postpone the memorial due to COVID, do they still cross over? Some of them have waited. Uh, and then there's some that even if the funeral was the next day, they just want to be out of here so bad they're not sticking around. You know, it's their choice whether they stay or not. I would say 98% of them do stay. Uh, and people that are killed in Iraq or wherever they were fighting at, you know, they're not buried in three days by the time they send them back to their home and the viewing or the computer viewing, whatever it is that they're doing, they wait. And so a lot of people will wait and they won't cross over until uh, the memorial service. So Martha is asking that all her life, she's been able to predict when people are going to expire. And as those um, who are going to expire, ask her, who are the two young men with her? She doesn't see them. Um, I guess her question really is, do you have any idea what those two uh, beings could be? Well, uh, if they know the time that somebody's dying, I would have to say they're probably from the light, which means I wouldn't see them anyway. So I, I really don't know. You know, I find it very odd that somebody would want to give you a message to tell somebody what time they're dying. I, I think that's a little bizarre. Um, I mean, even people, readers that do, you know, tarot cards or however they do their readings, they they may say, be careful in the month of March. There could be an accident if you're not careful. But even if they see 
the you know the future and it's the end a good psychic or medium will never tell you that is not their job so i i don't know what you're seeing i really do not so roberta a question having to do with curses uh, can people put a curse on someone unintentionally? I used to work with a woman that just hated her with a passion for no good reason. She went out of her way to harass me. She didn't want me to work there and didn't want anyone else to like me. Could someone like that unintentionally curse someone? I don't feel that I'm cursed, but after 25 years, I can still feel the hate. No, if you say something long enough with enough intention, and if you worked with this girl, you probably saw her at least five days a week. And if she was thinking that the whole time, yes, of course, something could have stuck to you. Uh, you know, it wouldn't be as bad as, you know, some of them could be, but just with the amount of time, you know, did you work with her for a year, two years, three years? That's a long time. Get one, go speak and do the little ceremony on the last chapter. And let's, you know, try and see if that doesn't make a difference if she gets out of your system. If you're still not seeing her or around her, I don't think she would keep it up if you're out of her sight. But remember this, negative energy attracts negative energy. So if this was put on 15, 20 years ago, it could still be having a little bit of residue. So I would go ahead and I would do the ceremony and see if that doesn't make a difference. <clears throat> so Patrick says, regarding the law of abundance check, I'm not sure when you actually write the check. You mentioned in the past, you have to do it at an exact time. How do you know when the right time is? It has to be written on a new moon before the new moon peaks that day. And they all the peak times for the new moon are on my website. And if you are signed up for free to be, get my newsletter every month, it reminds you then that, you know, exactly what time. I know that January, December is going to be okay. I don't know off the top of my head when it is. But January, for our time zone, the new moon is a couple minutes after midnight. So that one's going to be a really hard one to do. Uh, either you stay up till midnight and write the check before two minutes after or set your alarm clock. Again, people that are in different time zones, you have to do it according to your time zone would have an easier time. But that check gets written every month on a new moon before it peaks. Let's see. Do, do, do. Trying to find the next one. <laughs> uh, let's see. So my grandma passed this year in a week or two after my brother, which lives in her house now, seen what what a little white flash pass on by the house camera going straight to her room. And I guess she's wondering if could this be maybe her because the follow-up was spirit orb. <laughs> you know, and it very well could be. I have to admit that would be pretty quick because usually they don't start buzzing around for at least six months or show up in a dream for the first time for six months. But if she was worried about her house or, or really loved her house, and as, you're exactly right, that would just be an orb. Orbs are good. You don't ever have to worry about orbs in pictures or in your house. There's nothing wrong with orbs. Uh, so, Jerry, uh, what exactly happens after spirit crosses over? What's it like on the other side? That's still a big question to all of us and to you as well. No idea. Can't see anybody. Once I see them walk into that light, they're gone. Unless I see my own relatives in a dream. And you can ask them and they never tell you because you're not supposed to know until you need to go into it. So well, that seems awful secretive, worse than the Illuminati. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. There was one. I'm trying to find it. Uh, there it goes. Uh, does mugwort still work under the pillow if taking any nightly medication? It does. And that's why it does work because a lot of 
prescriptions that people take do retard dreams. And so the mugwort will override that, absolutely. Um, and even you put it between your pillowcase and your pillow, but if you accidentally, you know, when you change your sheets, if you take your pillowcase off, you accidentally wash it, dry it, it still works. A lot of people will stick it under the sheet where the pillows go. You want it under your head. Even if there's three pillows on top of it, it would still work. So it doesn't really have to be right next to your head as long as your head is over the space where the dream bag is. Uh, you will remember your dreams, yes. So Rachel asks, um, I have had several animals pass and have loved them all, but one of my cats that passed, I have in dreams frequently. Why would I only have dreams with one of them? Well, maybe she was the one that was the closest to you or she was one that's, you know, misses you the most. That could be a reason. Animals are fickle. You just never know. Um, the only good thing is that you will see them again. That's for sure. No matter, you know, no matter when you go, that little rainbow bridge, you may cry when you read it, but it does work. Let's see. Um, so Lisa asks, uh, before my dad passed, he told my mom that someone else was in the room with them. When mom says she didn't see anyone else, he just turned back to her and smiled. I told mom that it was someone coming to help him cross over. Um, within a couple of days, he passed. That's kind of common. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Lisa. They start seeing people sometimes up to a week before. Hospice nurses have wonderful stories about that. The patient will lift their arms up like they're getting a hug or they pucker up like they're kissing somebody. And it's like they're mumbling to somebody or smiling at somebody. It's such, it, it's such a help for the person that's dying to know that it's, this isn't it they can go ahead and take their last breath peacefully because there's mom and I'm going to see dad again. And there's, uh, you know, there's Blackie, my dog. And so it, it's, you're absolutely right. That's exactly who they see. I know like my grandmother kept seeing like her brother and, you know, everybody and she actually passed and they resuscitate her and she was pissed that they brought her back. And I'm like, well, yeah, she finally got to be with my grandpa who I never got to meet because he was long past. And I'm like, I'd be pissed too. <laughs> right, right. And that's a lot of people feel that way when they have near death experiences. A lot of people that have near death experiences, it's really not their time to die. So they shoot right back into their body. But most of them seriously do not want to come back. Because that white light is so loving and I, I, apparently there is nothing that we can compare it to as we're living. So, I, and I can think of some really good things over the years, but apparently it's been way better than that. So... <laughs> So next question from Lewis, do spirits still have or still behave the same way they did if they were alive versus when they were dead? Do alcoholics still act like an alcoholic and be around alcoholics? Good question. Yes. And that is why it's very hard for people that are, um, if they are drug problem, alcohol problem, they go into rehab of some kind. Rehab for any of these type of things are full of earthbound spirits. And the person that was sent to one of these rehabs, say an alcoholic, they get clean, they feel better, and they are 100% convinced. And they have convinced everybody around them, this is not going to happen again. I beat it this time. This is good. But gee whiz, that alcoholic ghost is going to follow them home. And within three weeks, you're off, you're off the wagon. You fell off the wagon. And so they can definitely influence you. I have never, I suppose I should be careful which way I say this. Um, I can't remember seeing an alcohol, a, a earthbound spirit that was an alcoholic 
that was really ever sorry that they weren't an alcoholic. When they were alive, they could have been, but seriously, not when they're dead. Same thing with somebody that's into drugs. Um, they really will affect anybody that's on drugs too. They can just fall right back into it. So, yeah. Yeah, until they cross over and go through all that healing and... Exactly uh, right. Which is a kind of another reason why we kind of talked about this maybe about a month ago, where depending on the type of mediumship and who you're asking for guidance, um, you know, mediumship using, which really isn't mediumship, but only getting information from earthbound spirits probably isn't going to be your best way to get true spiritual healing and guidance because they have the same mentality and personality as when they were alive. If they didn't have the answer when they're alive, they're not going to have the answer when they're dead. That is why Ouija boards are so, so dangerous. Because they think they're talking to Michael the Archangel or my grandma or who? Oh, come on. Why <laughs> would somebody from the light be on a Ouija board? It just, please, not happening. <laughs> So Jenna says, hi, Marianne, um, I'm from Youngstown and I feel like Youngstown and the Rust Belt, Rust Belt in general has an abundance of earthbound spirits. Have you found this to be true <laughs> of the geographic area? You're right. There are some areas that are hot spots and other areas that it's like I never get called to. But any of the in Youngstown, Toledo, absolutely. And you, the old, old neighborhoods there. Um, and just because it's an old house doesn't mean it automatically has a ghost because there's earthbound spirits and brand new builds too. Mm -hmm. But you're right. There are just some areas that seem to have more activity than others. And sometimes it goes in spurts. Uh, for those that are from this area, Mayfield Village, I seems like I was there three times a week for two months. And it's probably been three years since I've heard from anybody from there. So it just goes in spurts. And um, Cleveland Heights is a hot spot right now. Hinkley always has been. Lakewood, psh, Lakewood is full. So there are certain areas that just seem to have more than others, yes. Why would Lakewood have a consistent full... Like, what is it about? Old, old houses, some of them were considered back in the day mansions, you know, especially the ones that are on the lake. And then Lakewood went through one of these where everybody moved out and they rented all these houses out to people. So when you have renters in a house, um, that can transients, you're going to have a lot of stuff coming in and out like that. But the biggest thing was that in the 30s and the 40s, Lakewood had more witches' covens than any other city in Ohio. Hmm. And some of that energy, because, you know, witches are good. There's nothing wrong with, you know, practicing witchcraft. And there's good and bad in any practice, Catholics, anybody, Protestants, witches. But... If there was a lot of uh, stuff going on in those big houses, that house still holds the energy. And mm -hmm. that's why there's so much problems. It's interesting for those people that live in, in a house, an older house that has a front porch or a back porch, but it's more the front porch. There are ways to take down that. The, the wood around it so that people could get underneath and clean it out and get leaves or debris or something that was in there. But there was another way you could get back there. And that was through a hole in the basement wall that went right into that area. And oh my gosh, you cannot believe what people find in there. They find uh, uh, pendulums, they find oils, they find black candles, they find all kinds of things under these steps. So you know that whoever was doing it was hiding it and doing it under there. So it, but that's just, just sort of typical in that area. Hmm. Interesting. Didn't know that about Lakewood. 
Um, so Sally says last night uh, she dreamt of her deceased mom and she was giving her a note that she wrote something down and she was supposed to run an errand for her mom. How can she find out what her mom was wanting her to do? So obviously she didn't read whatever her mother wrote down. I would think of your mom a lot today before you fall asleep tonight or keep repeating to yourself when you fall asleep tonight. I'm going to dream of mom tonight again. I'm going to talk to her. I'm going to dream of mom tonight. I'm going to talk to her. Just keep repeating that. Fall asleep. Mom will come in your dream and ask her what she wrote on the note. She's mm -hmm. the only one that knows. Let's see. Um, so Alyssa says, um, I don't use a pillow because of neck issues. Could she use the mugwort on the ledge behind the headboard? Um, also, if I have a ghost attached to me and I put the quincy around my neck, will the ghost get stuck? Okay. I sort of made the comment before, stick the mugwort between your sheet and your mattress so that when you put your head down, your head is over wherever that is. And yes, you can wear a Quincy charm. And if you have a ghost in your house, it will stay three and a half, four feet away from you, which is a really good thing. Now you can't buy charms and put them up on your doors because if you have an earthbound spirit, that's how you, they get stuck. They can't get out. But if you're just going to wear one, it's fine. Plus the Quin, uh, plus the uh, dream bags with the mugwort in them all have a quince seed in them so that when you are sleeping on them, if there's anything in your bedroom, it can't get three and a half, four feet close to you. You get some more restful sleep than, um, exactly. which I think we all need right now. Um, Cindy wants to know, oh, she's new to our live. So yay, welcome. Uh, you spoke about removing curses. What are some of the telltale signs that you may have negative energy or a curse affecting your home? Okay. For a person, there are three things that will give you a heads up. It can be one of these, two of these, or all three of them, and in no particular order, it would be health, money, or relationships. So if you're having a serious problem for a while in one of those categories, you very well could have negative energy on you. The property has can have its own negative energy on it. Um, like for instance, the Brown Stadium has a curse on the grounds and it has to be cleared, but nobody in that organization believes in any of this, so it's never going to be done. Um, but if you get when go speak, go to the library and get it. You don't even have to, you know, buy it um, and read the last chapter. It will tell you how to do the ceremony for your house and for yourself. You know, you'd be a good one to get on Zoom to just to make sure if you really do have a curse on yourself or on your property. You would have to be in your house when you're on Zoom, but. Uh, we could tell lickety split if there's something going on with that. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, if earthbound spirits are outside, can they still manipulate electricity through TV and currents through the home, even if the quince seeds are up from years ago when you were out? Yes. As a matter of fact, I, <laughs> I learn things all the time. This, and this house is not the only house that this has happened to. The seeds are up. The house is secure. When I originally called somebody, let's say there were two ghosts in the house. When I got there, there was only one. So the one went into the light, but the other one was not there. Now the quince seeds went up everywhere. So now this ghost cannot get back in. And a couple of times they will bash on one of the doors. I mean, you will hear it. You'll jump three feet off the couch when you hear it. Open the door, nobody's there. But if they are really, really nasty or just stubborn, they will actually go to the outside of the house where the wires come into the house 
and they will mess with those wires, which will affect the inside. Um, obviously, if you're in a neighborhood where all your power lines and everything are underground, that's not that big of an issue for you. But if they are above ground with where you have, you know, uh, utility poles around with wires on them, they absolutely can. And the only way we figured out how to fix that was to take duct tape and a quinseed and tape it to the side of the house where the wires come in. <laughs> it, it, I, it's just amazing. It's just amazing when they make up their mind that they want to do something, they do. It's like they really kids like the the nuisance little jerks that that's right <laughs> oh goody what can we do now so they do think about stuff absolutely uh let's see so lewis has another question it says do spirits find love and clarity when they go into the light um he had a relative that was homophobic when they were alive will they will they still hate when they are dead no, they, once you go into the light, you go in at whatever level you're supposed to go into, you have things to learn because I'm sure I'm not talking to anybody right now on this, that when they die are going to go up as high as Mother Teresa ended up. So it depends on which level you want to go into, you'll learn, and hate would be one of the very first things that you throw out. But of course, you see all your loved ones that you've you know that you've missed your animals you see everybody so the hate would not be there for anybody or they wouldn't be in the white light hmm. uh let's see natalie says that you had mentioned before that it took two years to tell ted what you were able to do <laughs> what was his reaction <laughs> <clears throat> Ted's an only child and so he didn't understand the ramifications of having siblings and coming from a big, loud Italian family. And so anytime grandma would call and ask me to come to a, well, it wasn't asking, it was, you will come to this funeral. Ted just thought that was normal. And I just never told him because I didn't want him to think he was married to a nut, but we were had friends they had a little girl that was born a month before our little girl was born or a month after and ted and him worked together so this is 50 years ago one saturday night we'd go to their house and play pinochle the following saturday night they'd come to our house and play pinochle we'd have the car bed and put the kids to sleep and you know whoever's house we were at so the one night we're at uh, their house playing Pinochle, and I knew there was a lady ghost in the house, but I never said anything. It was none of my business. And we were sitting at their dining room table, and she and I were partners, and the guys were partners. And you couldn't see the counter in her kitchen from where we were sitting. And all of a sudden, there was this huge crash, like 1030 at night. It sounded like every dish in the cupboard fell out. And both Ted and, and her husband jumped up, nothing out of place, nothing out of place in the kitchen at all. And I'm just sitting there holding my cards. I'm saying nothing, 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 nothing. And they sit back down and she says to her husband, I'm telling you, there's a ghost in this house. <laughs> it moves my my mop around when I'm trying to wash the floor. It keeps turning on the baby's mobile when she can't. She's six weeks old. How does she turn that on? And she was talking about different. And I'm just sitting there holding my cards. I'm saying nothing. And so going home that night, we put uh, Amber in her car bed. And for those of you who are old enough, that use car beds. Why are our kids even alive now? I have no idea. So she was in the back seat in her car bed. Of course, no straps, nothing buckled in. And we're driving home. And I said to Ted, so what do you think about this ghost thing in the house? He goes, well, I don't know. But he didn't say no. Mm. And I thought, hmm, oh, I have to back this up a minute. Because guys are so logical 
they had to come up with an answer to what that big loud noise was. So they came up that it was a sonic boom. <laughs> and in the well, in the 60s, that's what they used to do. Okay. So I remember saying, do you think that was a sonic boom, really? He goes, no, they don't do them at night. I says, well, then why did you agree with him? He said, it's his house. If he wants it to be a sonic boom, it's a sonic boom. I said, oh, that's how that works. So we're driving home, and I said, you know why Grandma has me come to all these funerals? And so I told him everything. Oh, heavens, I should have never told him while he was driving. Because he kept looking at me like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And we got home and I went into the kitchen to fix the coffee pot to start in the morning. And he went and put Amber in her crib. And he walks back in the kitchen and he stands in front of me and he says, okay, I'm ready. I can take it. I said, take what? And he says, go ahead and do it. Wiggle your nose. Do whatever it is you have to do. Bewitched was on at the time. And he <laughs> thought I could wiggle my nose like Samantha off of Bewitched. I think he really thought he was never going to have to work again, but that's beside the point. So, but we're still married oh, over 50 years now. So he took it very well. I know he and I have fun conversations at, at your talks and, you know, like his, his version of some of the events that you guys have done, because he just sits really quiet in the back and just observes. And um, I think Ted should put out a book. <laughs> like from the husband's perspective. <laughs> Why did I marry her? <laughs> so, and I'm like, yeah, we're going to have to have our poker cards and just exchange, you know, the, the stories here while, while you're up there doing your, your talk. Thing. And, right. Right. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, what, what time are we at? Oh, we got about 10 minutes. Um, so another question that we have is, is ooh, they, they keep jumping. How can you tell if the negative energy is attached to a person rather than the property that the person lives on? Without a phone call, I could not tell. Or if you didn't get on Zoom, I couldn't tell. But again, if you do the ceremony that's in the back of When Go Speak, if there is no negative energy on the person or the property and you do the ceremony, you're not putting negative energy on it. If there is negative energy and you don't do the ceremony right, you haven't made it worse. So it's a total win-win. You can't mess it up. So, you know, what's it going to, you know, what's it going to take a half hour to get this done? And, You'll see the difference or you won't. Then you'll know from that if you're, you know. But like I said, if you want to know for sure, get on Zoom or call. Mm -hmm. If you're going to call, I'm a running about four, four and a half weeks behind, five weeks. So Zoom is way faster. But if you want the call, call. There we go. There's the phone number again uh, to be able to call. And let's see. So somebody has a suggestion for the book called Ted Speaks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> because he doesn't uh, talk so much now, so that'll make a huge difference. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Alyssa asks, uh, do you think if your grandma told you that you needed to see spirits that have crossed over, you would have been able to do it today? Um, also, can you talk more about what the levels are after you cross over? Um, no, I don't believe because she couldn't see ones that had crossed over. So she couldn't have, and she did not teach me how to see ghosts. I, she realized I could see them, but she never taught me that. And, um, what was the last part of that question? And if you could talk about the levels after you cross over. All I know is that when you go into the light, and the white light is there for everybody, no matter, I mean, people that are in prison and did heinous things have the white light. Everybody's got the white light. And, but again, somebody that has repented and was in prison and goes in, he's going to go in maybe at level, level uh, kindergarten and have to, you know, work his way up to his doctorate from college, so to speak. So just look at it that way on different levels. People, 
nobody's the same. Everybody's different. And if everybody died today, I don't know how many people would actually end up in the same levels if you think about it. Mm. So, But I don't know. You know, these aren't. And you can move those levels along. I'm sure if you believe in reincarnation, if you come back and you do it right and you work it off, because I think that's what karma is. But again, if you're happy at the level you're at, you stay and you just enjoy it. So let's see. Um, do you try to cross spirits over when you're like in your daily life, when you're out at the restaurant or library? And do you feel badly if you don't? I do not. And I do not. It's none of my business. If I see that somebody is messing, like I've said something in a restaurant when I saw an earthbound spirit messing with the waitress. I said something on an airplane when I saw an earthbound uh, uh, spirit messing with the flight attendant in the galley. Um, I've said something to somebody at a pet store when this customer had a puppy that was on a leash that was laying by her feet and this ghost walked over and kicked the puppy. Yeah, then I say something. But if I just see them walking around, I do not say anything and they don't know I can see them. Unless I stare at them or wink at them, they have no idea. So it's just, I, I have to pick and choose. Well, you would never get anything done. I'm sure there's just as many dead people walking around non-crossed over, you Pretty know. Much. Um, so maybe one of the last questions here, um, Jenna says she loves the show Psychic Kids. Would you consider being a mentor to a child with abilities like yours? She thinks she'd be great on the show. Um, I've never seen the show and I have been asked many times to do something with kids and I I don't know how to teach them something like that. I had a hard enough time uh, helping Tara, my youngest daughter, that can do this. Uh, she could see them, but she didn't like to. And so it was a matter of, you know, but the funny part of it is I didn't know she could even see them until she was in college. Mm -hmm. So, I, no, I wouldn't want, seriously, I wouldn't want the responsibility of, of forming some kind of thing with kids. I, You have no idea how many parents have asked me to do that or start a group for kids so the kids wouldn't be afraid. And I can understand that to a point um, because, of course, I was never afraid. Uh, but I know some kids are afraid. And especially if they have a mean earthbound ghost in the house that wakes them up every night or tries to scare them or jumps out of their closet. You know, you don't want your kid to be afraid, but yet it's happening to them. But I I really wouldn't know how to do that. And at this point in my life, I need to start slowing down, not going forward faster. So, <laughs> um, so okay. Let's check our time. Five minutes, probably really the last one. Um, it says that you mentioned in When Ghosts Speak that people can't go through ghosts and vice versa. If you bump into a ghost, do you feel it? Like if a ghost is sitting and someone sits in the same spot. They move. The ghost moves. That's TV. That's the movies. You do not walk through a ghost. A ghost does not walk through you. If they're standing close to you or in your space, you may feel a temperature change, hot or cold. You may feel a tingling on one side or the other, depending on where they're standing, but they do not go through you. You do not sit on them. Absolutely not. Okay. So if anybody wants to join us on Zoom, we have a few spaces left for December 21st, and we just added January 8th. So that one is wide open. Uh, each session only has 30 people. So there would be 32 total, the 30 people who sign up plus, you know, me and Marianne, which um, Marianne does all the work. I'm there just admitting people, muting, unmuting. Um, 
I get it easy. <laughs> um, there's the website uh, to go in and book. And please remember when you go in there and they're listed, you have to actually click the time to get it to open up to put your, your information in. Um, I get a lot of calls about that. And I'm like, no, no, go ahead and just click it and it'll open for you. Um, so there's the website. Um, it's also One last thing. Anybody that is ordering from the store, my store in December uh, for Christmas shipping for anywhere is only $3.99. It's a Christmas gift from us to you guys. And so take advantage of if you're looking for something. Mm -hmm. And Marianne's phone number to call her is also on the website. So um, yeah, we hope some of you will join us on Zoom. We will be back here next Wednesday at 10 a.m. Um, this has been kind of a regular thing. We've done it, what, a couple, two, three months now? Two, three months now, yeah, yeah. And the YouTube is today at 5.30. That is, um, that's over two years now. Every Wednesday at 5.30, there's a new YouTube talking about a different subject. So, um, mm -hmm. so that's, that's, that's every Wednesday too. So Wednesday's the busy day. It is. So you can go back actually and watch our previous conversations. Um, so you can go back. There, there's a lot of fun information, um, that we've talked about that people have asked. Um, no, the ghosts don't get angry if you come on zoom for being found out. Um, you know, they are they're not really gonna, they don't care. Out. Most of them, when you even talk about that, you're going to do this because I'll see it when I go in people's houses, they've talked about, Marianne's coming over. We're going to see what's going on. The ghost is standing in the corner and going, yeah, bet me. She's not going to see me. Ha ha. Yes, I can. So, <laughs> um, so Sally would like to purchase two Zoom calls. Um, so you just have to go in and register once for yourself and then register once for your, your friend or your relative. Um, when you register, guys, you will get an automatic email confirmation that said, hey, you signed up for this. And in that email is your Zoom link. Do not trash that confirmation email. <laughs> um, so make sure you hang on to it because that's how you're going to log in later. Um, and make sure your email is correct when you sign up. Whatever email you type in there, correct or not, is where the system is going to automatically generate and send to you your confirmation in Zoom link. Um, we've had a few issues with that. So just make sure proofread before you hit submit. Um, but it's all auto generated. No, you don't have to worry about me forgetting to send it to you. It, it's automatic because let's face it, it's, it's holiday season and people are busy. So um, it's going to come automatically to you like quicker than a minute that you signed up. Um, so thanks for joining us. We're going to be back here, what, next Wednesday, hopefully with less snow outside. <laughs> I shouldn't complain. It's it's Ohio in December. Happens every year. Why am I surprised? We should get used to it. So everybody have a really good week and be safe. Drive safely out there, guys. Remember, we drive this every year. Be safe. Um, I'm always surprised how many cars are on the side of the in the ditches every year. Please be safe. Don't rush. Um, and join us next Wednesday at 10. Thank you, everyone. And we will see you next week. Bye. <laughs>